On this week's show, how to find joint venture partners. In the news, we look at the fastest growing cities for rent. And we're gonna be answering all your property related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. It's going to be an interesting show. Yes, it is. I the, the, What we're covering today is a topic that I get asked. It, do you know what? It must be every day I get somebody message me this question. How do you find investors and how do you find joint venture partners? Do you want me to stop messaging you? Please, yeah, because it's getting a every bit day. tedious. It's, it's getting a ridiculous. bit tedious. Um, so, yeah, we've got a good show lined up. Um, we've also, there's a, there's a, a news article come out today um, regarding the fact that the cities in the UK where rent is growing the fastest um, and also where rent is decreasing the fastest as well, which is, is, is quite interesting because that obviously reflects on house prices and... Sure, the, sure. I mean, because obviously if, if, the, if the rent rises, yep. then more people want to more investors want to buy there mm-hmm. and then that in turn pushes up house Absolutely. prices. So if you're looking to buy somewhere with uh, good capital appreciation, stay tuned in. We're going to be talking about that in a bit yeah. as well. So before we go any further, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? I noticed you've had a haircut. You're looking a bit fresh. I have had a haircut. I had a day off. Okay. I had, you know, um, let, let, I think it's very true sometimes because I've been so busy. So, so yeah, busy. We, it's we been like, have been. It's been like long days, early in the morning. Yeah. Till late at night, day after that. Last week, I didn't have a, a day at home. Okay. I, I went home sometimes, but like at 11. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I was back up, so it's really crazy. So I took a day off, yeah. recharged the old batteries, um, had, went and had a haircut, cool. had a massage at the Crazy Bear Hotel. So that sounds like you've had a, an interesting couple of days. Um, yeah. It's nice to see you resting because we do work incredibly hard. Um, people don't maybe see exactly the amount of hours we put in, but we do put a lot. I of think it's important. I think it's important in. that you make time um, for make time for everything that's important. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, all good, all good. So what about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, finding joint venture partners and raising uh, raising finance. Yeah. Um, for sorry, finding joint venture partners to raise finance, finding investors for deal sourcing or for any other reason you'd need investors. Um, it's a question I get asked loads. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Lord. So let's start with finding a JV partner. Okay. Um, so if, if you are if you're looking to take on a property or take on a deal or rent to rent or, or anything really, um, and you quite haven't quite got the funds or you haven't got the the time or the experience, um, and potentially you're looking for somebody to assist you with that, how would you go about finding them? Okay. Well, first of all, I would say that most JV partners, I've done both. I've yep. been I, I've been sort of both sides of the coin. So your one side of the coin is you're the you're the expert. You're the one that you're the one that knows what to do, how to find the deal, yeah. how to manage the deal, depending on what it is. Because <coughs> um, you know, most JV partners, it's, it's it's maybe a buy, refurbish, finance type deal or, yeah. you know. Um, so I, I've played that part where, where you're looking for someone to invest the money. Mm-hmm. But I've also played the part where I've found someone else that's the expert and I've given them the money and then uh, as part of the deal as yeah. well. So I've done both. Um, I think it's important that you, you've got one. The problem is most people that are looking for a JV partnership most people that come to us and say, "I want to be a, I want to be, I want a JV partner," they've kind of got nothing going for them. Well, they bring nothing to the table, do they? No. Um, I think when, with any sort of JV arrangement, there's got it, it, there's got to be a, a balance of what both you're bringing to the table. It cannot be a case of like you're bringing absolutely nothing to the table, but you want somebody to put all the time and all the money and all the the experience into the deal because that's not fair. Well, normally that JV, normally what it, it is is they want they want to but they want someone else to put the money in. And they want to be the one that finds the deal, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But why would someone who had money in, invest in you? You've got to think about what, what value that you're yeah, bringing. Exactly. And not just the value, but also the proof of the value. Because like, I personally wouldn't lend money to someone who'd not done a deal. Yeah, exactly. I, I see as. If it was um, like, this is my first deal, I was like, why, why would I lend you money? Unless it was someone that I really trusted. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of trust in it. Um, obviously, if, not, there's got to be a lot of trust, but no JV agreement should be done on a handshake. It should always be done legally through through solicitors, through the correct contracts, the correct paperwork to protect both parties. So that that is from the offset. Make sure you do it legally through the solicitors and get it done correctly. So, uh, um, so, so you I, might do it for like your like your like the first person that lent me money for it for a JV contract yeah. was um, my my grandma. 
Uh, I borrowed, I've done other deals where I borrowed, borrowed money, but the first one that was sort of like a family whatever was my grandma okay. let me money for, for a deal. Um, I didn't have very much experience, yeah. to be fair. So she was taking a bit of a gamble on me, mm-hmm. but she trusted me that I would pay the money back. If, if the deal feel, fell yeah, on its yeah. arse, yeah. she trusted that I would pay the money back. I'll tell you an example I had uh, about three weeks ago. Um, I had somebody message me um, on Facebook and they were they were talking to me about deals, they'd been, all these deals they've been finding and literally I just got a string of messages, like 10 messages and they're all deals that they've been finding and things like that. Uh, and look, we don't mind looking at deals and things like that but we're not going, uh, like we get you get messages every day. I get messages loads of people saying, can you have a look at this deal? Can you have a look at this deal? We just don't have time to no. do that because we like to keep that service for people that are on the academy and people that are that are actually coming on to do further training with us. So we, we don't review deals for just people that r- randomly message us. Um, this guy kept, he messaged me lots of times and I, I looked at one of the deals and it was all right. It was nothing special. But then I got a, a random message off him about a day later and it was, um, look, Alistair, I, I, I really love what you've been doing. I, I watch you, I follow you, all that sort of stuff. I, I'm an aspiring investor. Um, can you basically invest in one of these deals and I'll run it and I'll manage it and I'll give you like a, a 10% return on your, your money? And all the deals he was sending me were, were just right move links. They were just properties he's found that would make a potentially a good HMO or, or buy, refurbish, refinance, whatever. Um, but really, when, when I sit down and think about it, what's he bringing to the table? Yeah, because you could find a deal like that yourself. I, I can find deals like that. I've got people that work for me, that people that can go out and do that day in, day out. Um, so what's this guy bringing to the table? How can he needs to differentiate himself from everyone else if he wants to raise a JV? Like, listen, I'll happily invest with somebody. Happily, I, I arranged a JV yesterday with somebody. Uh, I was in Wales yesterday, and I arranged a JV with with um, a couple of girls in Wales yesterday who are buying in the process of buying a, a commercial residential place, and we've um, agreed in principle a JV arrangement on that. So I, I will happily invest, right? But. What are, they, what are you bringing to the table? Now, this guy that messaged me, all he was bringing to the table was right move links. So he's got no experience. He's got no real knowledge. He won't invest in his own education. And he just wants me, he wanted me to lend him the deposit money. Yeah. And I'm like, but I didn't obviously respond to this message. I, I responded saying, look, thanks very much for getting in touch. Um, if you want any more information, email the, the company, info at simonleads.com. Um, but he's not actually bringing much to the table. He was bringing the right move link. But he's not bringing much to the table to you. Yeah. But but let's say he found someone. So like we're kind of, I suppose, the worst people to mm-hmm. approach with, because we've got. But number one, we get approached all the time, so we're seeing deals yeah. all the time. And number two, we've got we're, we're actively buying property ourselves anyway. So, yeah. but I suppose maybe maybe for example, if you had a family, you, you think about who can you add value to. Exactly. So what value do you have? Mm-hmm. Like what value does he have that you don't have? Nothing really. Not really, because I can do everything he's doing. But if he went to somebody, for instance, that he knows has got a little bit of money, that's not got any knowledge whatsoever, and yeah. property to them is a complete foreign beast. Yeah. Like, so no that's maybe whatsoever. got 50 grand saved, yeah. would like to invest, would like to get a good return on their money. And so, like, 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 for instance, sorry it cut you off. Um, sorry it cut you off. Uh, it's just, I was speaking to somebody yesterday, right? And they go to um, the business foreign foreign network meetings yeah yeah foreign and i did that for years yeah i i've never been, i've been to one but I, I found them incredibly boring um <laughs> right now i went to one and I, I didn't get much from it at all um but you won't my point what? being is he he goes to this event and he goes to the event every single month and he speaks at the event for 10 minutes he does a 10 minute pitch about what he's been doing on his property business if it, is it for rent so he'll probably travel around i don't i don't know yeah. what he does i don't all i know is that he goes to them quite regular yep. and he's now been given the opportunity to speak for like five or ten minutes just about what he does in business property mm. things like that now the people that are there don't really know much about property the, very few of them do so he's his one of the 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 jvs that he's arranged is through a 4N because mm. they know nothing about property. He's brought them a deal. They are now funding it for him and they're getting like, they're not even getting like, it's not even that high return. I think they're getting something like 8% return, um, which they were very happy with. Yeah. Um, but, and he's like, rubbing his hands together because he's really happy with that. Um, so it's, it's a case of your value has to, what you're bringing to the table has to be more than what you're asking, what, what the person, the, the opposite party is bringing. Well, it's got to be a win-win. It's got, it's got to be at least equal. Um, like for instance, if somebody was to come to us with a with an opportunity, it's got to be such a mind blowing opportunity that that we couldn't either possibly find it ourselves, or we we just don't have access to it, um, mm. and and things like that. So, 
we like I know you do, I know I do, I know Samuel certainly does. We get offers every single day for for JVs for for opportunities, um, and we generally only do business with academy members anyway because it's a perk of them being in the academy. Um, and we, but something we do, something we don't. But let's have a think there. Okay, so let's put ourselves in the minds of somebody who is watching this. Yeah. That's learned a bit about property. Mm-hmm. Maybe not done any actual deals yet because they've got no money. Yeah. So looking to, for their first deal, they're looking for a, a JV partner to team up with. Mm-hmm. Um, to do it, what would what would you recommend? How would they do it? How how would that, how would they go about finding a partner? How would that look? First thing is you need to be networking. You need to be going to as many many networking events as possible. Um, and and when you're there, don't be just trying to sell to people because it, it, you've got to add value to people before you sell to them. You've got to you've got to have helped them in, in some sort of way before you then try and sell to them, um, especially like a decent investment. I mean, I'm not talking about going to like uh, selling somebody a couple hundred pound or whatever. I'm talking about a big investment where you're asking them to invest in you. They need to, they need to three things. They need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. Mm-hmm. Nobody will do business with you if, you don't, if they don't know, like, and trust you. It's that simple, right? Um, so you need to go to networking events. You need to network like crazy, constantly be a- adding value to people, constantly be um, like trying to assist them before you s- sort of, stand up and go, hey, I've got this amazing deal, I'm looking for an investor. Because do you know what, we've all been to these pin meetings or whatever networking event where you, you, you get the same people every single month, stand up and go, hey, my name's Joe, um, I'm, I'm a property- Hi, Joe. Uh, property, yeah, hi, Joe. I'm a property investor and I've got some amazing deals, I'm looking for investors. And it's just, it's just oh, so boring, it's so yawn, come on, like, nobody's interested. Change your pitch up, change your 20 second pitch up. How can you add value to people so that they actually wanna come and talk to you? Then you build a relationship, build that relationship before you do anything. And then you can then start talking about deals that So would you doing. maybe say something instead along the lines of, hi, I'm, I'm actually, um, I specialize in HMOs and service accommodation. Yep. If anyone's got any questions or looking to invest in, I'm more than happy to sit down with anyone and give you free advice on how to. Absolutely, because you're offering them value, you're offering them help and you're offering to help them. You're not just standing up saying, "Hey, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, my name's Joe. I'm, I found this amazing deal. Um, I ain't got no money, but I can. I found a deal. Can somebody uh, JV with me? It don't work like that. Um, mm. It just doesn't because property is about people. Build relationships with people, and they'll, they'll, the money will come. Um, and yes, many people say that the the best, the, the right deal will always money will follow. So if you find the deal and it's an amazing deal, the money will follow. And I, I think that's generally quite true. Because every time I've had an amazing deal, I've, it's 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 been funded, or I've funded it, or I've found ways to to fund it, or whatever. Do you, th- um, do you think that like to begin with, the fir- you know, they always say that the first deal is always the hardest. It thing. is, yeah. And absolutely. part of the reason for that is like like I mentioned earlier, you've got no experience. Mm-hmm. What would you? S- I, I personally think before you do, do JVs, see that it would be a good idea to to have done a deal that you can show them and say, yeah, this look. is the. So for example, for you right, for example, yeah. Because you're a deal sourcer, you could, you know, you don't have to, you haven't invested in any of those deals, but you can very easily turn around to an investor and go, let me give an example of some of the deals that I found with some of my clients, this one, this one, this one, bam, bam, these are the deals, these are the ROIs, da, 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 I found this one, it's amazing, I want someone to invest, and it's like you immediately get that credibility. I think it's important that, that you've, that you've walked the walk before you sell it. So how would you, how would someone, but it's, it's one of those, I was, I was interviewing someone, um, doing some interviews today for an, an accountant's assistant. Okay. And it's people that have come fresh out of uni. Yeah. They're, um, they're a lot of them have got like a first yeah, on, their, yeah. on their degree. But Do you they, know what they haven't got? Experience. Experience. So they and and the companies are saying you need experience and yeah. and it's like a catch twenty two because they haven't got the experience. Let me so ask no you, one will put their faith in them. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Go on. Um, and this is a question for everyone at home as well. Would you rather employ somebody fresh out of uni that's that's got all the paperwork, all the 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 certificates to say they can do it all? but they've got no real life experience? Or would you rather employ somebody that's got 25 year, years real life accountancy experience, but no certificates? What would you rather employ? It depends on the role. For an accountant. For an accountant? Or an accountant's assistant. So today, you're the, 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 I, the role I for want, accountant's I assistant? Want, I want someone who, I don't care about the experience, I want someone who's fresh. Really? This is for this role, yeah? For a accountant's assistant? It's an assistant. Okay, it's it's interesting. Assistant accountant. I want someone who's gonna come in and just learn, do it our way, not, Come in with twenty five years. Intra- of- uh, that's actually very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, I, I kind trying- of agree with that actually, because they're coming in with, with a complete blank bit of paper. Look, I'm I'm freshly qualified. 
I work how I'm you young, I'm work. hungry. It, people pick up habits. That's a good. That is a very good analogy. However, However if I was looking for the, someone to run my accounts, if yeah. I was hiring an accountant to manage my accounts, it was someone who had 25 years experience or fresh, I'd definitely go for the 25 years experience. Experience, obviously with accountancy, they've got to be, accountancy is just a, an example. It could be a, a plumber, it could be a, a cameraman, whatever. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter, the job roles are relevant. Um, I think experience always outweighs um, fresh qualifications. I think, I I agree. think it does. Um, it, okay, so I've in which so case, ma- I've seen so many people that are fresh out of uni, that, but they, they, they couldn't, like, they can't tie their bloody shoes. Um, do you know what I mean? They can't do the simplest of tasks. Uh, I've seen this so many times, yeah. and it's just that like, it's laughable. Um, so, <laughs> so I think I think experience all the time over over um, qualification. Qualification. Okay. Um, it, obviously, when it comes to like being a doctor, you've got to be qualified. But I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not belittling qualifications. I'm just saying if I had to impl- if I if I had a job role, and it was for say a videographer, I would rather they have experience than qualification mm. because experience will always outweigh qualification, in my opinion. It might be wrong, and if it is, then. Pfft, so what? It's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, it's a, how do you get experience? Yeah. When we like, how how do you do that? I would say it's deal different. selling would be good. Yeah. And we talked. If you watched, we did an episode about how to become a deal source house, and we and we and we suggested doing your first deal for free. Absolutely. Yeah. So if I, so, what you could do, for example, is you could do a couple of free deals where you find the deals. You go to an experienced investor and say, hey, if I, I'll source you a deal for free, because mm-hmm. then they'll check it out for you as well and go, hey, you've screwed they'll, up here yeah, or whatever. They'll help you because you're asking for help. But you're doing it for free yeah. for them, right? So so that they can see you're putting themselves out. Then you've done a couple of deals then. So at least when you're trying to raise JV, you can turn around and say, hey, I teamed up with this person. Yeah. Uh, this is the deal that I found them. This was the return on investment. I'm looking for, an, the, this is the new one I've found. This one's yeah. even better. Yeah. I'm looking for, uh, an, and at least then you've got a bit of credibility so, so you, so you actually, because one thing going on a, you know, learning the information, seeing other people doing it, it's a very different thing actually doing it yourself. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, one thing I will say, though, is if you're completely fresh to it, yeah, yeah, um, don't make the stuff up. Don't, don't, don't that make out you've got. Saying. I know it does, but we just need to say, it. don't like fake it till you make it, right? Uh, I don't agree with that. Um, so, like things like if you've not done any deals. Uh, but you're looking for a JV partner, tell them yeah, this will be your first deal. But explain to them how you've done the calculations, explain to them how you've done your due diligence and really go to town and, and make sure you do it thoroughly and just be completely transparent and completely honest with them. And I, I tell you what, most there's a lot of people would still deal with you um, because it's, it's it's a risk and entrepreneurs are there to take risk. Well, it shows um, that you can be, uh, you know, if you, when, when you're very, very honest, yeah. it shows that you can be trusted. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. And it comes back to no like, and trust. People deal with people who know, like, and trust. So if we were going ask. through a step formula then, would you say, number one, gain a little bit of experience, yep. maybe through deal sourcing for free or something, but gain a bit of experience to show that you obviously get, Absolutely. learn how to do it first, of yeah. course. And then once you, once you know how to do it, get a bit of experience doing it for free. Yep. 100%. Then you've got a bit of social proof. Yep. Network, but don't network by selling. Network, network by, by adding lots adding of value, value, building relationships. Speak. Think about <laughs> think about what value you've got. Yeah. And then what they need. So don't approach people like you because you don't need someone to go and find you a deal because you've got that. You're a deal sourcing company. You got that coming out coming out your eyebrows. But um, <laughs> coming at my eyebrows. Coming at your eyebrows. It's okay. like a new one. It's, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a private joke. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, exactly. um, but. Um, but find someone who maybe maybe is your is your family member or yeah. a friend who's got some money who's keen to invest who would like to get eight percent return on investment, and then <coughs> would you? Okay, here's a question then, um, and then I think this will probably be a good, a good thing to finish off. And I've got, I've got something I want to say, so oh, I think on. this will be it. Okay, go on. Okay, so it. let's say then. If it's you, not, I'm going to say it afterwards. Okay, cool. You've got a um, you've got a a family member, yeah. an uncle, right? Who you know has got about hundred grand saved. Mm-hmm. You and, and he's got it in a savings account. And he's only one percent interest. Yeah, yeah. And you want him to invest with you. How do you ask him? Right. Okay. I was just, yeah, it is. Yeah. You knew. You knew where I was going. Right. Okay. This is how I would do it. Um. So let's just hypothetically say exactly that. Can I be the rich uncle? Right. Okay. So um, I'm going to be someone's rich uncle at some point. I would come. I would. I would. Uh, I would come up to you and go. Um. Hey, Tavish. Is that your uncle's name? No. I just try, I tried to think of a really Scottish name there. It's Tavish, uh, a Scottish name. Tavish, yeah, McTavish. Oh, like a surname. Yeah. So okay. You, so, so you go. Uh, okay. So you call him um, Harvest. But like, I'll like tell me. you what. I'll tell you what. Hey, William, as in William Wallace. Okay. 
Anyway, right. Okay, hey, so hey, Alistair. Hey, hey Alistair. Right. How you doing? So I would the way I would. This is how, exactly how I would play it, right? I would oh, say, nice look, to hear from you, Alistair. I haven't heard from you in five years. What can I, what, what can uh, I do for you? I just thought I'd ring you. <laughs> no, uh, listen how you do it. Listen how you do it, right? Just talk to them about the deal. Say, look, I've got this amazing property deal. Um, it, it's 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 tell them the figures. It's fifty thousand pounds. It's going to need a, a fifteen thousand pound refurb. Um, once it's been refurbed, we, we are very confident the end value is going to be like ninety thousand um, pounds. So we're going to be able to pull a lot of our money out of the deal. Um, this is a, a buy refurbish refinance deal that we're doing. Uh, we've got teams in the area. We've got people in the area that can do the work. Um, we're very confident we can turn that money around in in in, in four to six months. Uh, do you know anybody that'd be interested in that? Hmm. So hypothetically, yeah. If um, if I did know anyone was interested in it, mm. how would their money be protected? Well, they would have a first charge on the property, or they would, they would have some sort of protection on it. Um, typically, it would be a first charge uh, through, done through the solicitor. So, you basically, uh, after the mortgage, you're the first person that gets paid. Okay. So, like, if it all went if it all went badly, the person my my interested hypothetical friend yeah would they be the one that got the house so it's basically. like a secured loan do you know what i mean first charge is if, if you if you borrowed money from a, a bank and you secured it against the property it's very so what would their charge. return on inv- investment be let's say at the moment they've got it in the bank only one percent well look on on this deal um these are just hypothetical numbers on this deal i'm, I'm looking to give them 10 percent on whatever they lend 10 percent. okay so what kind of happens here is we end up having this very hypothetical conversation yep. where they're asking on behalf of themselves, yeah, really, but acting like they're interested in in, in so their in their friend. Just remember this: you're never. I'm never going to ask you for the money. I'm never going to ask you for the money. But I'm going to I'm going to say to you and I'm going to speak to you in a way that look, I, I'm I've got this amazing deal. I'm looking for an investor. Do you and any of your connections, any of your friends, do you have, do you know anybody that is looking to invest a little bit of money and make a little bit more return? Yeah, cool. so you um, just going to casually have a conversation with them about some of the deals you've done before. Yep. What the investors have got. They are oh, I've actually got another one. I'm looking for an investor right now. Do you do you know, do you know anyone uh, that might be interested in, in earning eight to ten percent on their interest rather than like the one percent you get in yeah. the bank? Yeah. And and do you know what I would finish on? I would never say, oh, by the way, if you're interested, you can do it. No. I would always finish on, look, if you ever hear of envy like that, just send them my way, let me know. And then I would change the subject, completely change the subject. Um, so like, hey, what did you up to last week? Just change the subject. Because in their head, they're, they're, they're selling it to themselves. Yeah. In their head, they're like, well, actually, I've got money in the bank. I, I wouldn't mind getting a bit of return. And do you know what? He's a nice guy. But even then, I would still not talk about it. I would leave it a couple of days. Because you don't, you don't you. want them to feel like you're selling to them. Exactly. And or there's or no pressure. you're pressuring them. You want to just let them know. And if they're interested, they'll come to you. Do you know, um, obviously, you know Anthony. Anthony John, he's a very successful Academy member, winner of the eviction. Um, Anthony Wilmot. Yeah, Ant- I call him Anthony John. But Anthony Wilmot, yeah. Um, anyway, he... Um, the reason being is this John's his middle name. Right. He um But like me calling Alistair Alistair Kerr. Kier. Anyway. Kier. So Anthony uh, joined the Academy eight months ago and he's now on thirteen properties. Now he's not bought them, but he's, he's they're, they're, they've all been purchased but using JVs, using lease options, but none of it has been done using his money. It's all been done through joint venture financing. Every single deal. So what Paul Waters told me. <laughs> What does he know? <laughs> um, anyway, it's all done. It's all been done through joint venture financing. Yeah. Every single bit of it's JV finance. Now, um, that's 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 true. And he had no knowledge. He had no investors. He was working. At, I think it was B and Q. It was a B and Q or Sainsbury's. I don't know. He was working Sainsbury's. At Sainsbury's. He was working at a big big chain. Came to the the crash course. Came to the academy. Learned how to find investors. Learned how to network. Learned how, learned how to JV. Now he's done he's done thirteen deals with JV money. Yeah. Um, and they're all getting, they're, they're all incredibly happy with them. I know some of the JVs that have already been paid back now, they're desperate to do more with them. And it's just no like and trust, build yeah. relationships with good people. And He's a smart guy. He's, he's a good a, guy. He's a, he's a guy. good guy. Um, so yeah, cool. On that note, that's how you got, that's how we would recommend finding JV investors. Right, it's now time for this. In the news this week, uh, we are going to be discussing the latest article that's come out regarding rents. So on BBC News at the minute, um, the UK city, cities where rent is rising the fastest. All right, so tell us why that's important. 
Well, of course it's important because it'd be a good place to invest if you're looking to invest. Um, it's a sign for the for the future, what's going on in that area, uh, what developments have, are there, why, why, is, why are these places going up? It also interestingly covers where's going down. Um, have you looked? I've had a little look. So you know, so I can't make you guess. I've not, I've read a little bit, but... What I, have you read? The Nottingham. Yeah. Nottingham's good. Manchester. Uh, Manchester's not on it that I can see. Okay, no, I can't remember. Okay, I read cool. it on the taxi. Um, Manchester, earlier. Leeds. Leeds, okay. Bristol. Bristol, yeah, I thought so. Uh, and the biggest fall. Um, is it in the UK? Is it across the whole of the UK? It is across the whole of the UK. It's either going to be... I don't think it's going to be North England... I'm not going to give anything Hold on, away. hold on. Bear with me, bear with me. Right. We're bearing. I think it's going to be somewhere in Scotland. Of course. Glasgow. Nope. Ed, uh, Aberdeen. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, I, 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 Aberdeen, I'll tell you, I, I think I know why as well. Go on, why? The oil industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oil industry is dying up there because uh, the, the North Sea is running out of oil. In the next 20 years, it'll be... The, a lot of the oil rigs are shutting down um, because they've, they've, they've done what they had to do. Um, the oil industry up there is cutting jobs left, right and centre, so people are moving back um, to wherever they come from um, because the job isn't there anymore. So, yeah, the, the rents will be going down because there's a, lot of there's a lot of supply up there at the minute. So Aberdeen's the worst. So your best ones, Nottingham... Um, Nottingham's been a little... a little sort of Nottingham's been a little... It's been under the radar, you know. It's and gone it's, up 5.4% yeah, in a But it's year. been creeping up. Um, it, but it's under the radar. and Nobody really talks about Nottingham. They all talk about Manchester, Leeds, but they don't talk about yeah. Nottingham like they do. And they're but, the only three... That the rents went up more than the average wage was okay. going up. So with um, inflation. So so where do you reckon the worst three are? You've got Aberdeen, which is the worst, and there's two in England, one in the Midlands. Wolverhampton. No. Walsall. No. Coventry. Birmingham. Coventry, really? But no. rents have gone down. Gone down. Interesting, because HMO demand is going up in Coventry. Rents have gone down. Or well, maybe the, maybe the, this is single let's obviously it's not it's course. not it's not gonna be HMO. And then uh, Northern City. Newcastle. No, but close. Town and we are. Is that a city? Not a city. Um, New, what, what's, what There's city? three, isn't there? You've got Newcastle, Sunderland and Middlesbrough. Ah, good old Middlesbrough. Yeah, Middlesbrough's um, come down. Nearly three quarters, uh, who's, who's is affected? Nearly three quarters of 16 to 24 year olds and almost half of 25 to 34 year olds rent from a private landlord. Okay. So it's the... Uh, at the end of the day, look, um, rents fluctuate always throughout the country, throughout the, throughout the world. Um, so the, everything fluctuates. So it depends what's going on in the area. So obviously Aberdeen's seen a, a problem because oil rigs and the, the oil industry is dying uh, up, up there anyway. Um, why is Middlesbrough struggling? Um, you know, apart from the obvious, but why, why is Middlesbrough struggling? What's the struggling? obvious? Well, it's Middlesbrough, isn't it? <laughs> um, like, I've, I've, I've been up there a few times and I can't say it was ever the most pleasant of experience. It, it just wasn't wasn't a pleasant experience. Was it all. like Hull? It reminded me very much of Hull. Although I heard someone said C after City Centre and Hull's nice. Someone said that Hull was like the city of culture or it something. Was, yeah, City Centre and Hull's nice. It really is. It's nice. And I, I've got HMOs up there, and they're all rented out very well. Um, it's, I, I, Hull's good as an investment area. Um, I wouldn't live there. But it's good. But I, I, I or visit there. <laughs> or be I, uh, seen there. No, Hull, Hull City Centre is actually quite nice. Yeah. Um, I can't say I've not really spent much time in Middlesbrough, but I've spent a lot of time in Hull. That's the thing because I've, I've got properties up there. Um, when I was finding them and renovating them and all that sort of stuff, so uh, not as good. Um, but it's interesting because obviously, what happens as rents go up? Then rents go up, so then more people want to buy there. Yep. So then. Demand for properties goes up. Demand, so yeah. House prices go up. Yep, exactly. So it means everything up. it's a good place to buy right, right now. Nottingham, Leeds. Yeah. For um, capital appreciation. It, it'd be interesting to find out why they've gone up so much. Like, why is Nottingham suddenly a... What's happening in Nottingham that's suddenly pushed the rents up? I don't know. It would be interesting to try and find out. Maybe see if there's someone a, watching this who lives in Nottingham can let us know what's going on with Nottingham. There must be some Leeds. developments going on or something. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But... Maybe there's a lot of investment getting made into the area, a lot of jobs going there. Um, but it, it's just watch out for these these traits. We're looking at doing, we're looking at doing a, a deal in um, Derby. Okay. Building 25 apartments and five shops. Right. Wow. 
which is not um, far from Nottingham. So I wonder if that's if that's going to go up as well. Maybe. Both um, Midlands. Derby's good because lots of industrial, lots of uh, factories in Derby. You've got um, Rolls Royce. Mm. There's lots of places in Derby that are really, really good. Um, another Jaguar, place. Is Jaguar Land yeah, Jaguar Land Rover's up that neck of the woods. Um, I don't know if it's in Derby, but I, I don't know exactly where it is, but sure. it's more, more Birmingham way, I think. There's one in Bur- um, there's, and there's a plant in Wolverhampton. But maybe yeah. there's lots there's lots around Derby but um, another interesting thing with regards to um, like cities that are going up is watch for these traits like obviously if you know if you can work out why they're going up then right, you can look at ones that are going to have that happen at, and then look at ones well. that are going to have that happen in the next three or four years and buy now while they're a little bit cheap um, because like developments like big multi-million pound developments don't happen overnight they're planned years and years in advance, so mm. you can generally tell where it's going, where, where it's going up. And and if you take Leeds, for instance, that's had a, so much regeneration over the last ten years. Well, um, have explain. you been to Leeds City Centre for the last any any sort of time recently? I haven't been for a while. I haven't been for a while to Leeds. Do you know the City Centre? The um, it's the what's it called? I can't remember. There's a really really nice city centre there, and there's a really nice shopping centre, uh, and it's massively been developed over the last sort of. 10 years and that's why prices are going up um so yeah it's, it's amazing it's really nice awesome right we now time for your questions and answers let's get straight to it okay so we have some questions that have come in from you guys thank you very much for sending these questions in uh, just so you know you can send questions in on the facebook group or YouTube comments, uh, Instagram comments, uh, anywhere like that, just fire the questions in and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so the first question is from Kabir. It and he says, wants to has know, Alistair lost weight? Have you lost weight? <laughs> I have, yes. Um, <laughs> what direct, direct debit, what due diligence would you do with a joint venture partner? because he's DD. So what DD for a JV? Yeah, so what DD would you do with somebody when you're doing a JV arrangement? So we what? did discuss this earlier on the show. It kind of depends. So watch, it watch of, back. It kind of depends, really. It depends on like who I am, where I'm, what's... Yeah. If you've got a charge on the property, I mean, it, it kind of, it very much depends. I'd want to, I'd want to, I'd make sure I was, if I was lending money, mm-hmm. I'd want to make sure that I was protected. I'll tell you one thing, I, one thing, if I was lending somebody money, I'd want to see their credit report. Uh, that's what, that's my little thing. I'd want to see their credit report because if they're not, if they're not paying the bills. But if you've got a charge on the property, why do you care? Just, I just do because it tells me a lot about them. It tells me about their but habits if you've got, with the money. But if you've got a charge sort of on the property, it, in a way, it might even suit you if they didn't pay you back from a financial point of view. Yeah, but I still, I, look, if I'm going to lend my money to somebody, I work incredibly hard for my money. Uh, if I'm going to lend my money to somebody, um, I'm not going to lend any money to anybody unless they've showed me their credit report. It's that simple. That's, so, that's one of my rules. Like Experian? Um, yeah, Experian. Just a copy of the, just a screenshot of the Experian. Let's have a look. I want to see if they're up to date with their bills. Um, if they're not, then... It, it doesn't sit well with me because it means that they can't manage the money. Um, and if they can't manage the money, how are they going to manage the money that I give them as an investment? Yes, you might have a first charge on the property and you could get that back, but I you would rather prevent prevent any problems Fair than of, offset. So really, do your uh, due diligence on the investor. Let's, let's just say you're lending money to somebody. Do your due diligence on them. Do your due diligence on their experience. Have they got experience? What training have they done? Uh, how many properties they've got? What properties have they got? Um, check their documents. Make sure they are who they say they are. Make sure they live where they say they live. Make sure that they're actually buying the property and the property's going to be in their name or if it's in your name, your name, whatever. You want to make sure you get it drawn up by a solicitor yeah. and that they look at it and go, look, if the deal goes wrong, I'm I'm protected. I'm protected. Or if I'm not, I know the risk. That's what I'd want to yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, num- uh, next question from Connor Arnold. Can you expand on bridging and auction finance, please? Can you expand on... Br- uh, Just explain bridging. what bridging and auction finances so it's the same thing bridging and auction is pretty much the same thing yeah so um, so bridging is is typically used if you if you if you want to do some work to the property you, you don't want to get a mortgage because you're going to want to mortgage it once the work's done you have a short-term loan uh, usually uh, 60% of the of the value of the property and then quite often a chunk of if not all in some cases of the of the refurb costs as well They'll lend you the money. They very much lend on the on the deal rather than on the individual. Yeah. So they want to charge on the property. They want to make sure that, that they can get their money. It's like, kind of like what we talked about a minute ago, but yeah. they're going to be doing their due diligence on you. Um, Essentially. It, it's quite expensive. You're normally looking at yeah. around about, um, uh, when I've done it in the past, I've used it a few times, looking at about 12%, mm-hmm. 14% interest. Essentially, bridging and auction finance are short-term, high-interest loans, 
to enable you to purchase a property quickly like you're a cash buyer. Um, the, generally, the, the, the finance is approved regarding the property more you. So it, providing you're not bankrupt, providing you don't have any mortgage arrears, and providing you are, there's one more thing. Uh, I think you've got to be on the electoral roll or something like that. But there's one more thing that you have. There's it, not much. Pretty, criteria. Much. pretty much anyone um, can get it. But yeah, pretty much anyone can get it as long as you're not bankrupt, been in mortgage arrears uh, and got any um, outstanding finance issues. But then you'll want to get off it onto a mortgage as fast as you can because it's, it's really expensive. Okay, so Ashley Harris, top three tips for securing lease option agreements. Start off as a rent to rent. Yeah. Do you know, we talked about this the other day. Um, if you're struggling to convert into... To, uh, speak to somebody and convince them that a lease option would work for them um, offer them a rent to rent first with the option to flip it to a rent to a lease option later so top three tips get out start looking at properties find properties that would match the criteria for it so negative equity people that are struggling to sell etc etc um, win-win it's got to be win-win make sure that the, whatever you're giving them is win-win don't try and stitch anybody up um, and exhaust the options and you, give them every other option yeah, before, before give them every get yourself along to the crash course we do talk about this we talk about exhausting the options making sure you you really treat them like family uh, I advise them best um, with regards to renting it out selling it etc 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 and then if they still don't want to go for it and a lease option is good for them sit down blank sheet of paper and say look what works for you what works for me how can we best come up to an arrangement where we're both happy you walk away happy I walk away happy end of and then get it drafted legally by a solicitor I would definitely do say not come, definitely use a template course. contract oh, so no. do not use a template contract it must be drafted by a solicitor if you want this thing to stand up yeah. um, especially when it comes to purchase it in five or seven years cool um, and get to the crash course because the training on it is actually really really good um, hey guys loving the show thank you Victor uh, is it possible to do an LOA rent to rent or rent to SA in Scotland LOA no rent to rent yes there you go um, Brad Hart what is the biggest hurdle you came across when starting out interesting Brad uh, Brad the hitman heart yeah, what's the yeah. biggest hurdle? Okay, biggest hurdle um, for me was um, mindset and caring about what other people thought. I now have no problems with mindset and I now don't give a rip what people think. So that was my biggest hurdle. Awesome, man. What I was, was yours? Uh, biggest hurdle, is, it was talking property, obviously I'm assuming, not business. I would say property was convincing my wife that investing in property was a good idea. Okay. That's yeah. it. She cool. didn't. She didn't like it at all. Shall we do how many? One more or two more? Let's let's see how long this one is. Two more. Two more. Two more. Um, hi lads, enjoy the podcast and have been listening. No, 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 no. Come oh, on, done get that it one. right. I've done that. Not enjoy. Really enjoy. Get it right. Come on. Okay. Cool. Hi lads. I, I thought I'd already read it, and that's what you stopped me. Enjoy the podcast and re you again. Okay. Hi lads. I really enjoy the podcast. Okay. I really, really enjoy the podcast. I've been listening religiously for the last six months. Would you consider a rent to rent model where the property is rented as student accommodation from September to May and rented as service accommodation via Airbnb from June to August as a viable strategy? Cheers. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I stayed in a. So I'm assuming. In the September to May, it would be like sort of a HMO type rooms. They do that a lot in London. Yeah. They do it a lot in um, London. I stayed in a HMO in Wolverhampton, um, and that's what they do. During, during the term times, it's students, and off terms, it's, it's service accommodation. And it is a HMO. It's got HMO doors, it's got fire doors, it's got everything. Um, and it's like £25 a night. Uh, yeah, it was absolutely really good, but you cannot mix. So you can't have half, H, half HMO and half service accommodation. It has to be one or, one or other. Why is that? I don't know. How do you, do you know that for sure? Oh, I don't know if it's hundred percent legal, but I know that I've spoke to the councils about it, and they just don't, they don't, they no, don't like agree it. with it. Whether that's illegal, I don't know. But either way, I, that's what the council said. All right, final one then. Uh, Sharif Rashid. Hi guys, absolutely love the show. Tune in every week. Love Thank the, you. I love the banter and whatnot. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you have any tips on raising seed capital for investments like deposit money? I know lenders aren't keen on lending against a loan unless it's gifted but everyone runs out of deposit money at some point, and where would we go to get this kind of funding? Do you, have you noticed? It's every, I know I mention it every week, but it just seems to happen every week. We pick a topic, we talk about it, and, and then, then the, the questions, questions that come, come in, in yeah. because you know, we don't plan this. No. We, we literally, we, we pick a topic beforehand, and we, we, film, that face, we film the Facebook Lives, so yep. we get the questions, and, and then we start filming the show, and then by the time we come back to it, half an hour later, they're all here. So, um, at the start of the show, we talked about finding JV investors. Um, Go back and watch that. 
uh, and and yeah, that's a good tip. Now, with regards to recycling your cash, maybe start looking at the buy, refurbish, refinance strategy. Um, you, you can refinance and, and, and get a lot of your money out. So I, I'm doing a deal at the minute. Um, we agreed yesterday um, that in theory, obviously, we'll not know until it's all done, but in theory, I, I should pull all of my money out plus about £5,000. Um, so, re, re, but great rinse question and recycle. about the gift. I, I, know, I know what you mean. The, the, the key for that, I suppose, really, is, is dealing with a good mortgage broker who, yeah. who can then advise you. Because um, it, it very much depends on the mortgage company, what they're mm. wanting. But I know in the past, <laughs> uh, people have said to me, oh, you might have to say that it's, it's, a, it's a gift. I've never just, had to do that. Just, we have to be super careful because... Um, be careful how you raise your deposits, and, and and if you've raised it in one way, tell that, that be transparent with the mortgage company. Otherwise, it's mortgage fraud, uh, and and it can cause you problems down the line. Well, certainly be transparent so, with your broker, and then they can tell you how to word it, how to best yes, play it. Yeah, but you want so, this. You want a good broker. You've got a good relationship with. You can go to them and say, look, this is the situation. I've got this loan. <laughs> 30 grand coming in, I want to get a mortgage, how do I best Completely transparently, this? lay your cards on the table, say this yeah. is where it's come from, this is how I've got it, boom. Uh, and then they'll advise you correctly. Um, don't don't ever try and hide where you've got a deposit from because it, it will just come back and bite you in the ass um, and, and it'll, it'll, it'll sting. So. so there you go. Well guys, thanks ever so much for tuning in. Really, uh, uh, it'll bite you in the ass and sting. What are you laughing no, at? No, 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 just, it was a funny way to end. So. Well there you go, what, getting bitten in the ass? On that note, on that bombshell. Of getting bitten in the ass and getting stung in the ass. That is the end of our show. Uh, tune in. We're back here every single Saturday at 7 p.m. Listen to us if you're driving on the way to work. Do you think people are more, more people actually listen than watch? I know they do, yeah. So yeah, if you're yeah. watching this now, you're, 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 you're in the, uh, the, the minority. Yes, you Most are. Most people are just hearing our... You get the privilege of getting to look at us two handsome fellas. That's, maybe that's uh, why. Maybe it is. That's, that's a bit especially, depressing, actually. Especially isn't it? a new haircut. It's a bit depressing. Most people would rock. They, they, they kind of want to hear what we got to say, but they can't stand the idea of looking at us. We, so we've got radio. Uh, we, we, faces for yeah, radio. Faces for radio. <laughs> that's clearly not a voice for radio, <laughs> but the way you fumbled that. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. you next week, guys. See Take you care. guys. Bye bye.